everyone, and welcome inside University of Credit Union Pavilion. For the first time in 2023 here in Moraga, your St. Mary's Gales get set for action. The women's basketball team back home to begin their conference and WCC play here in Moraga. Evan Giddings along with Dr. Joaquin Wallace with you on the WCC Network. And since the beginning of the new year, Doc, a lot has changed around these parts. And you know, one thing that's been certainly good for St. Mary's, beginning to have that health return to them on the court. But one thing we do have to discuss is the fact that they'll be without their head coach, Paul Thomas, for this game, who right before the new year placed on paid administrative leave. And so it'll be Allison Fasnack, the acting head coach for St. Mary's. Well, Coach Fasnack is pretty familiar with what Coach Paul Thomas has been doing. She's been here. So I don't. I see that as a smooth transition. But first, I have to say I was... I was perclimped because I haven't seen you in quite some time. <laughs> I shed a tears waiting for this day to be here. <laughs> so we're here now. I, thank you. I missed you over the holidays. I did too, Doc. You know, we were texting back and forth. You sent me the Merry Christmas. I got to do back as well. Happy New Year's. Do you have any resolutions that you can share with the folks? Well, you know what? I just want to be, I just want to win the day. Every day I want to yeah. win the day and just be better than I was the day before. And listen, I like to get a win for our club this evening. You know, they're coming off a three-game losing streak, so I hope they can get back on the winning track. Having Steele back does play well in that as well for St. Mary. So we'll see how her being back can impact the lineup but we, they definitely do miss her, did miss her. Yeah, absolutely. So a little shorthanded on the bench, but they get Claire Steele, who returns to the court, has not played since the last time that we were here at UCU against UC Davis. A couple of games due to injury, a couple of games due to some travel issues, of course, being up in Montana for the holidays, had trouble getting back, missed a couple of games. But we were discussing her impact specifically on the offensive end as far as what Claire Steele, the transfer before this season coming in, adds to this lineup. Yeah, I, I definitely like to see her take more shot attempts. I mean, she gets around the rim extremely well. She's leading the team in free throws we talked about, and she doesn't shoot as much. So hopefully she can get more shots up. I'd like to see her get at least 10 to 12 shots up per game to be a scoring threat along with uh, Bamberger as well as Whedon. They can get her on track as well. That gives them three people that can score. She can create her own shot as well. Yeah, so right now you add your third leading score back to the lineup. Meanwhile, on the LMU side, a team that's 4-11, 1-3 in West Coast Conference play to begin their stretch is a team that is going to be a little bit shorthanded. They're missing four players tonight, so right now the roster is just at nine, and right now LMU, the most you know, prominent missing piece of their lineup, is going to be Alexis Smart, a team's second leading scorer and leading rebounder. They're going to miss her this evening. Yeah, they're going to have to use everyone to get on the glass and try to get the rebounds and try to make up for her missed rebounds. You spoke about the fact that she's averaging 5.9 rebounds per game, so they're definitely going to miss her in regards to her height as well, so they're going to be small on the backside Side, the front court, so to speak. So we'll see how they'll be able to handle that. But again, this will be a great opportunity for St. Mary's to break that three-game losing streak. Both teams have come in, coming in with a losing streak. Loyola with two consecutive losses. St. Mary's with three consecutive losses. So what we do know, unless a tie, and I don't know about it, somebody tonight is going to win. Somebody's got to get the W, and St. Mary's hopes it'll be their first of the new year. First opponent of the new year, Loyola Marymount rocking the black here on the road and your St. Mary's Gales in their road gray alternate uniforms with the fancy curving literature across the chest. Gales in the front, numbers in the back. It is Bamberger up front against Kari Clark and it's LMU that wins the tip. For the starting five tonight for St. Mary's, and it's going to be Leia Hannafin along with Tacey Whedon, Allie Bamberger, as well as Taylor Dalton and Hannah Rapp, the five on the floor for the Gales. Three-point shot from the corner. LMU will take its first look. That's Layla Curry in the starting lineup for the first time this season with the miss. And had a chance to watch her sister, Jaden Curry, that plays for California. Nicole Rodriguez, Cassandra Gordon, along with Ariel Johnson, the team's leading scorer and captain, and Kari Clark round out the starting five for the Lions. Spamberger dish pass, open corner three-pointer wrap off back iron and tipped into the hands of the Lions. That's a great look, two feet inside the paint for the kick out, was not able to deliver, but great offense for the first time out for St. Mary's. And St. Mary's team averaging about 63 points per game. LMU just a tick under 60. LMU a team that doesn't shoot it well from downtown, likes to get into the paint like that fadeaway jump shot from Gordon right there, but it's off. What you have to look at, Loyola gives up 71 points a game, so defensively they're not that stout. St. Mary's and Hannafin to the free throw line. Rap thought about the corner. Now we'll kick it out. 
Hennepin taking her time. Swinging it to an open rack from the wing. In and out. It's another great look for St. Mary's. Two consecutive three balls. Is not able to convert, but offensive they look fluid so far. Jump shot right there from Ariel Johnson. Again, the team's leading score could not connect. Johnson, a captain in her grad season, 13 and a half points per game. Underneath, Dalton had it swatted by Kari Clark. So Dalton had a clear look, but Clark came around. The eraser said, not here, was able to deliver for the block. Clark, along with Johnson, two of the four captains on this team, missing one of them, and Sequoia Allman here tonight. Clark stuck underneath, up and under move on Bamberger, and there's the game's first two points. She was extremely patient in the paint, used her footwork for the up and under, was able to deliver. Bamberger, speaking of down low, Bamberger scores for St. Mary's. Bamberger did her work early, was able to seal in the post, got it right in front, was able to use the glass for the layup. LMU coming off a loss its last time out to number 19, Gonzaga. St. Mary's trying to break a three-game skid themselves. Took losses on the road to BYU and overtime to San Diego, and as well as on the road to USC. Ball wrapped up underneath. It's a jump ball, possession arrow to St. Mary's. That's great help side defense by Whedon, was able to stunt. The ball handler picked it up, was able to get on the floor for the jump ball. The 50-50 balls are important as well if you want to try to break a losing streak. Officials tonight, Benny Luna, Corey Long, Dominique Hunter had it taken away in transition by LMU. That's Curry. Curry almost had a backcourt, was able to deliver it before she was able to go over the timeline. St. Mary's in a man-to-man -man defense to start tonight. Dish off inside from Gordon is stripped by Bamberger. Bamberger moved in the direction of the ball. That's one thing that you teach defensively. Always make sure you move in the direction of the ball. She was able to do so. Nice cut by Dalton. Excellent pass by Bamberger. So Dalton was able to face cut the defender for the nice pass, the lead pass by Bamberger for the layup. Rodriguez tried to turn the corner, draws the foul on Hannah Rapp. That'll be her first personal foul, first team foul. And I'd like to go back to that pass by Bamberg. What she did in terms of football, you throw your the wide receiver open. That's what she actually did is threw the ball to, for the def, uh, her teammate to be open for the layup. Led her right to the cup as the aforementioned Claire Steele talked about her impact in the pregame. Checks in for the first time for Dalton. Steele's typically been in the starting lineup, but first game back, having a chance to come off the bench. From the acting head coach, Allison Fasnack. A little pass inside, right to Hannafin. Up ahead, Bamberger running in the lane, and too strong. Layups, putbacks, and free throws. I'm sure Bamberger would like to have that back. Laid up just too hard off the glass. Going a little bit too fast there was Nicole Rodriguez, as Steele will slow things up. Well, only momentarily gives it away to Johnson. So both teams pretty sloppy here in the first few minutes, first four minutes of the game. Five combined turnovers between the two sides. Johnson and Aaron shot. Bamberger the board. Out ahead to Claire Steele. A transfer from Lehigh University. Down to the deck, loses the handle, manages to tip it somehow to Whedon, who will triple, fire a triple, and an offensive rebound. Bamberger straight away. Front rim, no. So they need to close the doors in here because it's pretty cold. Because <laughs> no one's making any shots so far. 25% shooting for St. Mary's, 16.7 for Loyola. That's well, a breezy 48 degree evening here in Moraga. Just waiting for these two sides to heat up a little bit. Loyola's not used to this. They're from the Sunshine State down in Southern California. They're not used to this cold. Well, spin move by Johnson. Floater is good as Steele goes down trying to draw the foul. Johnson did a great job of using her footwork, put her in the spin cycle, was a lift right over for the bucket. So tying it four about midway through the first. Bamberger skip pass, wrap, three-pointer. You bet. And that's a great job by Bamberger. When you catch the ball at the low post, if you turn to the opposite side, the skip out is typically open because they're double teaming. She did a great job of finding and stepping in for the three ball. Third attempt there from Rapp. Has had a couple of in and outs on three pointers. Got that one to go. Jump shot at the free throw line. That was pretty pure from Cassandra Gordon. Yeah, Gordon was able to get to her spot and was able to lift, elevate for the bucket. Now it looks like they ruled that Rapp, former three pointer at two, had a foot on the line. So we are tied at six. 
St. Mary's still technically awaiting that first long ball. Can Whedon trigger it? She can. You ask and she delivers. No foot on the line that time. Tacey Whedon, 355 career threes. West Coast Conference record. That was osmosis. She heard what you were saying <laughs> mentally and said, I'm going to knock this down for you. A steal by Hannafin. Up ahead, Whedon, one-on-one -on -one with Gordon. Goes inside, leaves it up for Rapp. The layup is good. That's a great job by Whedon. He has to be patient, took the contact. Rapp ran the floor for the layup. After a bit of a cold start for St. Mary's, two of eight to start their evening, they've hit their last three field goals. Five-point edge for the Gales here in the opening period. And there's going to be a whistle side out. Now we'll take us to our first media timeout. Foul is going to be against St. Mary's. When we return, LMU has possession. 11-6 edge for the Gales, 3.32 left in the opening quarter. Seven Giddings, it's Dr. Joaquin Wallace. We'll be with you after this break. You're watching St. Mary's women's basketball right here on the WCC Network. St. Mary's looking to break its three-game skid here. First one of 2023, and they are taking on LMU, a five-point edge with 332 left in the opening period. Evan Giddings, Dr. Joaquin Wallace with you here on the WCC Network as the Lions will inbound after the foul prior to the media timeout. Aspen Adams, a senior guard in for the first time off the bench, and LMU running with a bit of a shorthanded player staff tonight, only nine available. Four inactives for LMU. I'll tell you what, Evan, when you're nine players active, one thing that you do know, that you're going to get an opportunity to play. An opportunity for shots. Ariel Johnson knocks down the first three for LMU tonight, cuts the deficit to two. You got ten toes behind the line, didn't panic, just caught it, shot it, was able to deliver. Aspen Garrison also in for the first time, kicks it over to Dalton. Corner three-pointer. Soft, no. Offensive rebound, Harrison. Tied up, jump ball, and it's going to go to LMU. Also, McKenna Mastora in for the first time tonight. Joining Rapp, Dalton, along with Whedon for St. Mary's. We talked about turnovers early. Four for Loyola, two for St. Mary's in that first few moments of the, before the timeout, media timeout, so both teams have to clean it up in terms of managing the basketball. When you're not scoring as well, you want to make sure that you can continue to get shots up. Well, the first personal there on Amaya Oliver, a junior out of Richmond, California. Weed in a triple. Front rim no, Garrison there momentarily for the board, keeps it in play, but right to Adams. 
Ashlyn Adams in transition. Gordon inside to a cutting Oliver who gets fouled and will go to the free throw line. Does a great job by Oliver doing her work early, continue to run the floor, was able to get the pass and go straight up for the foul. Now she has an opportunity for a couple of free throws on the season. She's 14 out of 27, just over 50%. Well, the forward has pretty much been the sixth man off the bench most of the season. He's played in all 15 games with a couple of starts as she knocks down her first. Been the leading bench scorer for Loyola Marymount. They'll certainly need her scoring tonight with the absence of Alexis Mark. Second leading score, so that's about 11 points you got to make up. Knocks down both. I mean, she's a transfer from USC. The head coach, Erica Hughes, was at USC as well, so maybe came over with her. The Pac-12 experience. Jid Kirisome checks in for St. Mary's. Weenan and Rapp to the bench as Hannafin also returns. Masora right to Hannafin at the free throw line. To the corner, Kirisome. No on the triple, and Johnson the board. Johnson kicks it out. Here's Rodriguez who drives into the lane. Open shooter, Gordon. Back iron, but right there is Oliver for the offensive rebound. Goes inside, burrows her way to the rim. And that's a great description because she did burrow away, was able to get the putbacks, layups, putbacks, and free throws, second chance opportunities. Nice job by the Lions. After the Mistora miss, Gordon, the quick little step back. So a flurry of points for LMU. They have a four point lead. So they're able to get out and run. Miguel's are not making baskets. They're showing their athleticism. And they're in this 1-3-1 zone as well to keep St. Mary's out of the painted area. Gale's trying to put an end to the 9-0 run. Garrison cannot, but Dalton, second chance now for Hannafin, who sticks it. And one area of concern when you don't have your best rebounder when you're playing a zone, Evan, you have to make sure you box out. But you say, who are you going to box out? You have to make sure you line up on someone because you're guarding areas, not players. Well, the zone for LMU. Meanwhile, man-to-man -man for St. Mary's Johnson, a long two in and out there. Here is Somi up ahead. About 13 seconds. Shot clock, game clock separation. We'll see if the Gales opt to go for the two for one. Garrison with some size on the block, being defended by Johnson. And draws the foul underneath the basket. So Garrison did a great job in the zone. She's running the short corner on the baseline in the 1-3-1. One, one. She was able to get it down a lower block. She didn't get it and turned quickly. She got it and kind of held on to. We talk about crabbing the basketball that allowed the defenders to come around and get their hands on it. If she would have got it early and turned quickly, she would have had an opportunity for either a bucket or a foul. Johnson's first personal, second team foul for LMU. 27 seconds left here in the first quarter. Bamberger back in for St. Mary's, replacing Garrison. Dalton. And now Hannafin looking for Bamberger. Entry pass. Bamberger going to work. Met by a double team. Inside to a cutting Dalton. Nice finish with the left hand. So Bamberger is, is patient. She knows she's getting double team. The cut to the front of the rim. Nice bounce pass for the bucket. Three seconds left. At the top, Rodriguez loses it. And the clock will run out. So no jump ball before the buzzer. St. Mary's and LMU tied after one. 15 all. And we're back with the second quarter after these messages. Evan Giddings and Dr. Joaquin Wallace with you. You're watching St. Mary's women's basketball on the WCC Network.
LMU finishes the first quarter, hitting five of their last seven field goals. And they have tied St. Mary's at 15, heading to the second period. Final 10 minutes of the first half. Evan Giddings and Dr. Joaquin Wallace with you here on the WCC Network. And Doc, obviously St. Mary's and their offense has yet to get going yet, but it feels like LMU found a little bit on the offensive side of the tail end of the first. Yeah, LMU switched that one 3 one zone defense for St. Mary's to miss some shots. It was able to get out in traffic and was able to score easy baskets, so now they're back to a man-to-man. -man. St. Mary's shot just under 40% in that first quarter as Dalton tries to get to the rim, draws contact underneath there on Adams. It'll be a blocking foul and two free throws for Dalton. One thing that St. Mary's is doing, once the ball goes into Bamberger, they're cutting off the defender, the person that's doubling Bamberger. That ball handler, well, the person that's Garner, should be cutting to the front of the rim. You get easy layups. That's what you see what's happening now with St. Mary's. First free throws of the evening for St. Mary's. And Taylor Dalton, junior guard out of New Zealand. Played every game this season after playing it all 33 a year ago. Knocks down two. Sandra Gordon swinging it over to Rodriguez, an open three-pointer off the mark. Nice rebound there by Mastora. Mastora after an all-WCC freshman performance a season ago. Now coming off the bench here today along with Claire Steele in spite of her return. Dalton after the Aaron pass will whip it out. Extra pass by Hannafin. Mastora the corner three. And that's a great three ball on the hockey assist for the three in the corner for Mastora. Was able to step right in. And McKenna Mastora has been shooting around 30% from three this season. Knocking down St. Mary's second triple. Five point edge for the Gales. Deep three by Adams who knocks that one in. And she did a great job of finding and locating. Was available, was able to stick it from distance. So both teams beginning to heat up after a slow start. He's talking about the cold breeze coming through the UCU Pavilion. No more. They turned the heating on. And that was only the second three for Adams on the season. She came in one for seven at shooting at 14%. So now she's two for eight. Trio of substitutions for St. Mary's Steele, Whedon, along with Bamberger, in with Dalton and Hannafin. Steele thought about the three. Her first return after an, an absence of four games. Hannafin drives into the lane, throws it up off the backboard, miss and tipped out there by Layla Curry, who just checked in. Johnson also returns, drives all the way to the rim, nearly gets the and one, but instead will get free throws. Johnson likes to get downhill, shows her liquidity with the basketball, gets to the rim, has an opportunity for two free throws. Curry Johnson, also Kari Clark in for LMU. Johnson shooting 90%, 45 for 50 in terms of free throws. She's second behind Mork. Mork is out for this game, as you mentioned earlier. Taylor Dalton tagged with the foul. That's her first. And it'll be Amy West, redshirt senior, and a forward out of, uh, out of New Zealand. Entering in for Hannafin, Johnson. Very good free throw shooter, hits both. Steals pass up ahead, nearly poked away by Curry. So the freshman with some defensive tenacity off the bench, but stays in St. Mary's hands. Yeah, Curry, if she would have used her outside hand, she would maybe be able to keep that ball in play versus the inside hand. Destiny Samuel, fifth year forward out of Queens, also in for the first time for LMU. Off the steal, here comes Curry. The pass to Samuels, and now it's Johnson. The St. Mary's tried to run some split action, but they had Bamberger doing the action itself. The pass inside was deflected for the turnover. Clark down low to Samuel to a cutting Gordon right in the lane. Soft touch it in. So Gordon did a great job of cutting to the front of the rim again. The player that double teamed the post player, she was able to go right inside. Bamberger straight away, three is off. Dalton down to the deck along with West. It's going to be a jump ball, possession arrow for LMU. Evan, it's always extremely important to always move without the basketball. 
you're the most difficult player to defend if you're moving without the basketball versus staying stationary. Both teams are doing that, especially when the ball goes into the post. Rodriguez back in for Gordon. LMU on a 7-0 run. They've been a very streaky team so far this season. Just four wins to 11 losses. Last win came against Northridge on December 21st. Meanwhile, St. Mary's looking for its first win since a road overtime victory at Pacific back on the 17th of December. Jumper off in the rebound. That was a great job by Steele to jump the screen. Forced Johnson to turn it down. Did not get the shot that she wanted. Settled for his jump shot and she was short. Steele penetrating, kicking. Dalton, a three-pointer from the corner. And that's one area that St. Mary's has missed. As Steele is able to get two feet in the lane, that means the defense have to concentrate on her. Be able to kick it outside for the three-point shot. Gales back out in front, one point edge. Hasn't been much separation between these two sides. No team is led by more than five so far. Johnson stops and pops. But Johnson likes to get inside the painted area. They ran a little A series with a couple of screens for her. She was able to get downhill, was able to get that shot up and score. A little backdoor look to Dalton. West with a nice pass, but Dalton couldn't corral it, and instead it's Johnson out of the pack. St. Mary's is getting that shot all that look all throughout the game with the split action. Destiny Samuels transition three is off, but an offensive rebound. LMU's got another shot. That was a great job by LMU not to settle for the three ball. Was able to slow it down and reset the offense. Coach Eric Hughes was yelling it out, set it up again. Johnson stepping back, jump shot, back iron. Bamberger wrestling for the rebound and draws a foul on Kari Clark. Yeah, Johnson got the A series, received the screen, used the pull back dribble for the shot, was long, foul on the floor. So Gordon will return for Samuel on the LMU side. Meanwhile, Kira Some checks in for Claire Steele for St. Mary's. It looks as though Allison Fasnack is pretty monitoring Steele's minutes. Acting head coach tonight, Allison Fasnack as Tacey Whedon barrels into Gordon, draws the blocking foul. And so that'll be already the fourth team foul of the quarter for LMU. That is something to keep an eye on, Doc. Foul trouble for a team that, again, has only nine active roster members tonight. And look for Coach Erica Hughes throughout the game to switch the zone defense as well to try to mitigate those fouls because she only has nine players, as you mentioned. Here are so many the inbounds to Hannafin, who just returned. Here are so many whips it. Whedon nearly loses it. Hounds off the defender long enough. Eight to shoot. Here's so many looking for Bamberger. Got tied up along the baseline. Nice job by Clark just to keep that in play. And that was a great job but a help side defense by Ariel Johnson. As she's seen the pass was going down, she was able to follow the ball and was able to get the steal. Clark directing from the high post. As Rodriguez goes inside to Gordon, turnaround jump shot, round and out. Kirisome pushing up ahead, midway through the second quarter. LMU leading by a point. Kirisome down low, Bamberger's one-on-one, -on -one, finds an open Dalton, who scores, and the foul! Taylor Dalton's got double digits, and St. Mary's is back in front with a free throw coming. So Amaya Oliver lost vision of her man, and Dalton went to the back of the rim. Easy find for Bamberger, but an opportunity for the two free throws. Media timeout on the floor, 4.50 left, second period. St. Mary's 25, LMU 24. We'll be back after these messages. Evan Giddings and Dr. Joaquin Wallace with you. You're watching St. Mary's women's basketball on the WCC Network.
After the media timeout, it'll be Taylor Dalton at the free throw line. She's got 11 points, four or six from the floor with a chance for a one more after the and one prior to the break. St. Mary's leading 25-24 over LMU. Looking for its first win of the new year, second win of the conference schedule. And it's Evan Giddings and Dr. Joaquin Wallace with you here on the WCC Network. Doc, we got ourselves so far a pretty tight game between two sides that look like they're really looking for this victory. Both, of course, trying to break a couple of skids. Well, you look at both teams. Loyola shooting 43% from the floor. And guess what? St. Mary's is shooting 43% from the floor. Loyola 9 for 21. St. Mary's 10 for 23. So that's pretty evenly matched two teams. You can tell as well there are only one point that separates both teams. They'll be shooting two free throws. We're speaking of St. Mary's. Well, the officials checking something out over at the scores table on the monitor. The crew of Benny Luna, Corey Long, and Dominic Hunter. Now, Doc, I, I know we said we we're going to do this a little bit later, but I feel like now might be the perfect time. It's interesting because every time we do a game together, I always tell you, it's, you know, it seems like you know everyone around every single gym that we walk into, but you have a personal connection with one of the officials here tonight. I tell you what, Dominique Hunter, I recruited her as a freshman, as an 18-year-old. She played four years for me at San Francisco State. She's, one of the, she's like number six in scoring, number two in terms of rebounding and block shots. And I've watched her just kind of take this meteoric rise in regards to officiating I, I would not be surprised when they should be on the in the NBA as well. But, you know, she's had a baby last year. was out her baby shower as well. Congratulations. I mean, she, she, she calls me dad, coach <laughs> dad. You know, I'm really close to her. I mean, she's like one of my daughters. I have three, count her as four. And so, you know, I'm so proud of her. She's doing extremely well. And a lot of the officials that I talk to around the league always just talk about her professionalism and how she works hard. I mean, she has a master's as well from San Jose State University, so I'm extremely proud of her. And again, she's not my biological daughter, but she is my daughter. Yeah, it's cool to see that reward. I mean, obviously, you spent a lot of time together as coach and player, and for her to be such a obviously exceptional athlete, but also an exceptional human being, uh, I'm sure it's something that feels pretty cool. Oh, definitely. You know, I, I, I mean, I, like I said, I became for Clint when I knew I was coming here to see you. Now when I seen her, I was for Clint. <laughs> we sh shed a tears. Understandably. And then off the missed free throw, Gordon the other way puts LMU back in front with that jump shot. 26-25. So St. Mary's after the elongated break. We'll try to go to work on offense. Bamberger, who's been quiet tonight. Maneuvers inside, had it blocked, and then out off of the Lions. So what they're doing, Evan, every time that Bamberger gets the ball, they're doubling on the bounce. So what po possibly what St. Mary's can do is post her up at the pinch post area where you can't double at that point because now you can see the floor. You take away from the low block, now she has opportunity to operate, maybe we had a drive to the basket as well. Inbounds from Hannafin, takes the handoff from Garrison, kicks it out Kirisome, three-pointer on the way, in and out, rebound, and Johnson is first to the deck to go get it. It's going to be a jump ball, and this time the position arrow keeps it with St. Mary's. We talked about where will Loyola get the missing rebound, six, point re six rebounds a game from Alexis Moore. Ariel Johnson's getting in there, getting her nose dirty, trying to get those rebounds. Yeah, right now, LMU as a team, 13 rebounds to St. Mary's 15, relatively even considering they're missing their top rebounder. Missed entry pass there and stolen away. For St. Mary's turnover number seven this evening. Yeah, Kira Somay tried to get the ball up to Bamberger. I would like to see a bounce pass allow her to come out, set her feet. Gordon out to Oliver, who will swing it. Johnson, he's got nine points, drives inside, fades, blocked by Bamberger. So Bamberger, the vertical spacer down low, did a great job of keeping her hands up, did not bring her hands down. That's why there was no foul call on the play. Garrison. Dumping it off, Bamberger had a tip just enough to alter the shot. So what they did that time, they went to Garrison at the post, they put Bamberger at the pinch post area, and then they dove her down. She was able to get the pass, could have been a foul, no call, rebounded by Loyola. Well, it's not too often that teams can limit Ali Bamberger, but just one of six so far in 14 minutes. Meanwhile, Nicole Rodriguez adds on to the LMU lead with a fadeaway. 
Loyola is basically saying we're going to force someone else to beat us outside of Bamberger. As you mentioned, she's the leading scorer for the team, coming in averaging, I think, 16 points a game, 15 and .5. So they're making sure that they're not going to allow her to beat her. Tacey Weed's going to have to step up. Claire Steele's going to have to step up as well to get these additional points. And perhaps some minor frustration there from Bamberger gets called for the offensive foul. That's her first personal. It'll be just the second team foul for St. Mary's. And sometimes when things don't go your way, you do get frustrated. She ran down and plowed into Kari Clark. Easy call for the official. Dominique Hunter was down below for that foul. Still back in for St. Mary's. Hannafin nearly stripped it from Gordon. Destiny Samuel also on the floor for LMU. Swings it to the corner for Rodriguez. Inside on Steele. We'll swing it around. Gordon right there to Clark. Spins, not the double team, forces an errant pass. That's out of play. Nice idea. Clark was looking for a post player, replacing her down low, just threw it right over her hands. We're speaking of Destiny Samuel, the fifth year senior, for a turnover. Samuel probably going to have to play bigger minutes tonight than accustomed to. Has played in 13 games, 10 minutes per game in those. Hannafin the miss there for St. Mary's. Hannafin got away with a travel there, took an extra step, officially didn't call it. Of course, Eric Hughes will call timeout as well because she understands the importance of each possession here, up by three. Now they can get another, up by six or five on this next possession. So possessions are at a premium right now. They know that they have to make these shots, so great timeout. And we'll keep it here through the timeout. Again, second year head coach, Erica Hughes. Story career at USC. Now head coach for Loyola Marymount, assisted by Shannon Golar, Daisy Fader, and Tamara McDonald. And so this is an LMU team, again, not one that was necessarily projected to make noise this season in the WCC, but St. Mary's a team, preseason, voted to come in sort of middle of the pack. You got to see this as a nice test for, uh, for the LMU side. Meanwhile, St. Mary's, you're trying to figure out how you can take care of business here at home. Yeah, you definitely have to win the games at home. I like to say you always want to win at least 80 to 90% of your home games. If you can get 60 to 70% on the road, that's a winning record. That should be an offensive foul on a moving screen. Well, that's going to be on Destiny Samuel. LMU already having committed five team fouls, so the offensive won't turn into free throws. Well, it's going to be on Samuel, and that's her first. Meanwhile, St. Mary's said four turnovers the last five minutes. They haven't scored in the last three minutes. So Loyola goes back to the 1-2-2 matchup zone. First is a 1-3-1. One, one. Nice pass inside as Bamberger was able to cut to the open space from the high post in the zone. She found an area. Nice pass for the bucket. Just her second field goal. First of the second quarter. And a good pass from Garrison. Her first assist. Ariel Johnson here for LMU. So St. Mary's is playing with two post players, pretty much Garrison and Bamberger using a lot of high-low action. Off the long rebound, Mastora into the front court. Sloppy with the basketball, had it stripped, taken away. Her chin was up, but she lost kind of where the defender was at, was right in front of her. She had the right idea, but did not take account for the defender right in front of her. Nice defense from Leah Hannafin. Read that jump shot perfectly and looked like she got a piece. Player to Hannafin now. St. Mary's swinging it. Under a minute to go here in the first half. Back to the 1-2-2 matchup zone. Gills would love to finish this quarter strong. Garrison down low to an open Bamberger. So again, by playing two post players, Garrison was able to get it on the strong side, and Bamberg was able to float to the rim on the back side. Nice bounce pass for the bucket. So St. Mary's featuring its best score here in the second quarter. Bamberger's now got six points in the half. Five-second shot clock. Game clock separation. Destiny Samuel down the lane. No offensive rebound there from Oliver. Goes up off the second chance. Count it and a foul. Second chance opportunities for Loyola. As Oliver was able to corral a rebound, flip it over to the left shoulder for the jump hook. Now has an opportunity for the old-fashioned three-point play. And LMU back in front has themselves a lead with a free throw. Potentially could take a two-point edge into the locker room. Layla Curry will check in for LMU. And a foul is going to be on the floor. It's going to go against St. Mary's. So Curry, we talked about 
the tenacity on the defensive end, Doc, but doing work off of a free throw draws a foul on the rebound or potential rebound. And we talked about the fact that how are they going to make up for the six rebounds a game by Alexis Mork? I'm sure Coach Erica Hughes say, listen, we need to have everybody on the glass at all times. And you can see it's paying dividends so far. They're looking at this as a flagrant as well because it went to the head area. So they may be shooting free throws and getting the ball out of bounds as well. Potentially. Now you saw Layla Curry coming up off the floor, all smiles. You wonder how much she might have accentuated some of that contact. But either way, a heady play. She got hit up near the head and is going to let the referees know it going down to the deck and now, of course, getting checked out by the, athlete, by the athletic trainer. So you're saying that maybe some acting involved there. You know they have a great uh, media uh, department <laughs> down at LMU as well, right? You know, that they do. There, right? Yeah, no, I had a couple of friends that went down at LMU. Fantastic area down in SoCal. Great location down in Hollywood. Exactly. You know, you think that could get her on a Hollywood star right there? A star <laughs> in Hollywood? And she did because what is smiling there. And well, I, 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 I guess we're going to find out after the uh, the call or non-call, so to speak. But was, was either she, way, it will be a foul. Was she's uh, Stanislavski down there. I think the, what, Meisner. Was she using Meisner down there? You know, the <laughs> acting of Meisner. You know, the, <laughs> my daughter. She's in all that. She always talked to me about Meisner and things of that nature there. Okay. So maybe that's what it was. Kind of feeling it. You know, trying to get into it, feeling the part, so to speak. Mm. Now, I, I'm not sure about the acting, but I do know that there's a former St. Mary's alum, went to USC, is now a world-famous director. His name is Ryan Coogler. Played football here at St. Mary's and got involved down at USC after, after graduating. So you know, maybe not necessarily following in those footsteps, but an appreciation for the arts uh, is what Southern California has. Exactly. You never know, right? I, mean, I think you may be... Uh let me see. We may, get you, we may get you. Let me get you a headshot. Get you down there. Yeah, as we, well, we, huh? we got to work on that. Oh, Doc, you got the gift of gab. I'll tell you what. We're going to get you a headshot. Get you, get, I can get you an agent. Get you going here, Evan. Soon. But right now, the Gales got to find themselves some offense. I mean, going into the locker room, obviously, you got some time. You'd love to be able to finish up this last possession. Should you get it if it's not a flagrant foul? But right now, you're down by a bucket. LMU has scored 31 points in the first half, and this is a team for Loyola that only averages about 58 per game. Uh, so right now, the Lions you know, playing pretty efficient, especially considering they're down four players, including their second leading score. So got to give credit to LMU showing up here on the road for the first game of 2023. So far, they put their best foot forward. I would agree, but we have to look at the second half as well. We mentioned they only have nine players, so we'll see how their fitness and conditioning level come out in the second half. Sure. But one area that you have to look at, the fact of the matter is they've given up 71 points per game all season mm -hmm. long. So at some point, you hope to look at St. Mary's, probably get on track. St. Mary's averaged 62.6 points a game. Might as well say 63, possibly. So they should be able to get out and run. But one thing that Loyola is doing they're controlling the tempo of the game. That's important. They know they don't have a full bench, so we need to control the tempo of the game, make shots, get back defensively. And how do you control the tempo of the game, Evan? You make shots. Because when you make shots, what are you able to do? You're able to get back on defense. You can dictate the defense. If you're missing shots, it's difficult to guard and transition. So they're doing a great job of making shots, controlling the tempo of the game, getting back on defense, showing different looks, zone man-to-man, -man. and so far St. Mary's have not been able to figure it out. Well, they'll certainly have some time to make those adjustments at the half, but right now it looks like our officiating crew is deciding what the final ruling of the play is going to be. So it was a free throw taken by LMU. Layla Curry gets into the lane. Evidently was fouled by Aspen Garrison. So either way, that's going to be her second personal on Garrison. And we'll await the official ruling. Okay, all right, so it's going to be really a flagrant foul, excessive contact to the face. By the letter of the law, it sounds like the, the officiating crew got it right. Yeah, well, anytime you get a foul to the head area, they're going to call it a flagrant foul, even though it may not be intentionally, it's going to happen. So now they have two free throws and opportunity to take the ball out of bounds, because this could be it literally a six-point play yeah. all together. No, good point, because you got the and one on the front end of this thing. You miss the free throw, but you get the foul, so you get the free throw back, and then two flagrant free throws in the ball with an opportunity 
I'm assuming they're going to run this clock out with 15.3. Shot clock is off at the end of this first half. So Ariel Johnson will take the free throws. And again, she's a 90% free thrower. Has already hit two tonight. Knocks down her third. And Evan, she didn't listen to the broadcaster jinx right there. <laughs> no, she did not. She knocked that down. Uh, I mean, those, those free throws are pure. I, I know you're trying to do the osmosis thing again, and she heard that and said, well, not tonight. I'm going to knock these two down. Well, we've already established I'm not a great actor looking for that headshot. Also not a great when it comes to jinxes. But uh, right now, shot clock is off for LMU. Four-point lead. A chance to make it their largest lead of the game. Three to shoot. Looking for the curling Adams. Step back, she got it off as good as it goes, but it's a little long. Either way, a strong finish to the first half by LMU. They take advantage of a St. Mary's mistake that flagrant helps put up the Lions by four points, 33-29, and we'll be back with a halftime report coming your way next. It's Evan Giddings and Dr. Joaquin Wallace with you. You're watching St. Mary's women's basketball on the WCC Network. At the break, Loyola Marymount leading St. Mary's 33-29 here inside UCU Pavilion. Evan Giddings, Dr. Joaquin Wallace with you on the WCC Network. Cole Doc, you know, this was the first half in which you thought that a shorthanded Loyola Marymount team was not going to simply wilt, but instead they threw the first punch in this first half, and with the help of a flagrant foul down the stretch, find themselves up by a game-high four. And when you look at the stats, I mean, it's pretty interesting because both teams are 12 out of 29. 41.4% for both teams. Yeah. Here's one stat for you. St. Mary's has 12 assists on 12 made field goals. So what that's telling you, they're sharing the basketball. On the other side, 
Loyola is five out of 12. So when you look at a game, Evan, you look at what type of style of offense that they're running. You can tell that St. Mary's is more of a player movement, man movement. While you look at Loyola, it's pretty much ball screen. One person has the ball trying to make things happen, try to get downhill. And that one person is Ariel Johnson with 11 points. She's showing her liquidity with the basketball. She's able to get in the paint and make plays. But I like to see more of Claire Steele in the second half get her on track, so to speak, because as I mentioned earlier at the top of the telecast, I would like to see her score more to take the pressure off of Bamberger and Wheaton. As you look at Bamberger has, in terms of points, she has six. Dalton has 11. You look for Bamberger to kind of get on track, but what they're doing with her, they're double teaming her every time she gets the ball, so that forces other players to make plays. Well, and Bamberger has responded to an extent. You talk about the assist, she's got five of them. But something that you wouldn't necessarily expect with LMU missing their best leading rebounder, second leading scorer, St. Mary's with somewhat of a size advantage in Bamberger. They haven't necessarily been able to activate her down low in the paint. Dalton, like you mentioned, has been doing her thing. Ariel Johnson from the perimeter for LMU has been activated, so, so to speak. But Allie Bamberger is a, obviously the best scorer for this St. Mary's team. How do you expect St. Mary's to try and get her going in this second half? I would say that in terms of they may play Aspen Garrison a little bit more than you put Bamberger at the pinch post area. That allows her to kind of move freely because you can't double team her at the pinch post area. It's easier to double team her at the post area. So if you play Garrison down low, Bamberger up top, now you take the pressure off of her because now she doesn't have the basketball. So now she can cut to the lane. She did it a couple of times. You can find her on the split action as well. She can step back and knock some threes down. She can get the ball at the pinch post area where it's more clear and she can get to the front of the rim as well. Versus down at the box, she has constricted area because everyone's double teaming her. Great job by St. Mary's to cut to the front of the rim. The person that's doubling is going to the front of the rim. But if you want to really activate her, you may want to put her at the pinch post area and allow it to work from there. Well, it's been a tight game so far. Ten lead changes already in this first half. Surely more to come in the second. Hopefully the final one for St. Mary's. They trail LMU 33-29 at the break. When we return on your halftime report, we're going to take a look a little bit deeper into some stats and get you set for second half action here at UCU Pavilion. Evan Giddings and Dr. Joaquin Wallace with you back in just a couple of minutes. Stay right here. It's halftime between St. Mary's and LMU. You're watching St. Mary's women's basketball on the WCC Network.
Back in Moraga, California, inside UCU Pavilion, Evan Giddings and Dr. Joaquin Wallace with you on the WCC Network. St. Mary's trails LMU 33-29. Gales trying to break, break a three-game slide. Meanwhile, LMU trying to put a pin in a two-game losing streak. Some first-half stats for you. First for the road team, LMU led by Ariel Johnson, who's got 11 points on nine shots to lead all Lions. Also a three-point make and four free throws. LMU is a team seven of seven at the charity stripe in the first half. And meanwhile, Cassandra Gordon, the second leading scorer, eight points on four of seven shooting. And the leading rebounder for LMU is Kari Clark. She's got five. On the St. Mary's side, it's Taylor Dalton that has led all scores with 11 points on four of six from the floor. Also a three-pointer for her, two of three at the charity stripe. Meanwhile, Ali Bamberger, we talked about in the previous segment, trying to get going. She's got six points on eight shots, although does have a team-high five rebounds as well as five assists to lead all passers here this evening. St. Mary's and LMU both an identical 20 or probably 12 of 29 from the floor both shooting 25% from three. Meanwhile the edge has been at the free throw line. LMU seven makes the St. Mary's two. In the paint it's been an advantage for the Lions 16 to 14 and then when we talk about the times tied and lead changes six ties already 10 lead changes in the first half. So St. Mary's has got a second half in front of them. Meanwhile, a couple of scores from around the rest of the WCC. An, a tight one up in Spokane between number 20 Gonzaga and San Francisco. Right now the Bulldogs leading the Dons 51 to 49 with 5-12 left in the fourth quarter. Santa Clara up in Portland taking on the Pilots at 69-62. Portland leading the Broncos with 4:45 left in the fourth. And also a game coming to a close over in Stockton. Pacific looking for its first conference victory of the season. Leads Pepperdine 71 to 61. Looks like they'll capture that first win of the season. But right here, St. Mary's looking for its second WCC win of the year. When we return, second half action between the Gales and the Lions. A four-point lead for LMU at the break. Third quarter's coming up next. You're watching St. Mary's women's basketball on the WCC Network. Well done, man. Appreciate you. Well, so actually, this when I was.
that buzzer means we are set for the second half here in Moraga. UCU Pavilion, St. Mary's trailing by four to LMU. I've been getting to Dr. Joaquin Wallace with you here on the WCC Network. We talked about the adjustments that St. Mary's needed to make during the half, Doc. Now it's a question of can acting head coach Allison Fasnack and this skills team implement it for the final 20. Yeah, we're going to take a look at the first 10 minutes. Again, one thing that St. Mary's is doing well, they're passing the ball, 12 assists out of 12 made baskets. But again, you have to find a way to get Bamberger percolating down in terms of scoring. I'm sure they're going to try to figure that out in this second half. Activating Bamberger, limiting Ariel Johnson was also one of those keys to the second half and they do get a nice start from that perspective Johnson thought she had the end one and instead pushed off draws the offensive foul that's a good start We've been down by six only down by four to see if they can come right out and score Loyola's is in their zone defense and a three-pointer from Tacey Whedon excellent start from St. Mary's they turn a turnover into a bucket. So exactly what I talked about at halftime, they put Bamberger right at that pinch post area. He tried a double, kicked it over to the corner for the three ball. And pardon me, the previous turnover by Johnson was not a foul. She stepped on the baseline. This, however, was a foul. So it looks like it's gonna go against Bamberger, a blocking foul. And that will be her second first team foul for St. Mary's. That was only the fourth Actually, yeah, the fourth three-point shot made by St. Mary's this game. Whedon's got half of them. Of course, the program and conference's all-time leading three-point shooter, 356 career makes from downtown. Defending there on Adams, who dishes it off to Gordon, who drives all the way to the rim but left it short. Great offense. They ran a little shuffle series. Gordon was able to get downhill, was not able to finish with the left hand. Great look at the basket. Dalton leading Bamberger a little too much that time. Bamberger saying, I just throw it up over the top. I got the size. I got the size advantage. Two possessions for Loyola. They 0 for 2. Actually 0 for 3. Well, this is St. Mary's team that does turn the ball over quite a bit. 19 times per game. It has come down since the beginning of this season. Speaking of turnovers, LMU gives it up. I have a theory on that in regards to turnovers. I'll explain that to you later on. Hannafin whips it out. Dalton from beyond the arc. Back rim, Bamberger the board. Hannafin tees it up. Too strong. Rebound to Johnson. But another takeaway. St. Mary's this time is Dalton who's getting dirty for the steal. 50-50 balls, extra possessions. So third chance for St. Mary's. And Bamberger is tossed away by Clark. That was a great help side by Clark. And she gets it on the block. Whipping it into the corner, three-pointer from Gordon is good. So great defense to offense for the three ball by Loyola. Tayson Whedon here, Whedon, pardon me, looking at a zone for LMU. Gets it at the corner at the elbow, shoots it. Nearly a shooter's touch with Bamberger, offensive rebound. Well, if they're not able to create plays for Bamberger, maybe she's got to do it herself. A nice start there. Second chance opportunities, offensive rebounds. She was able to fight off the offensive player. The defensive player was able to grab it one hand and flip it off the glass. St. Mary's continuing to stay within striking distance. Down by a bucket. Gordon there for Adams. A little lefty floater in and out. Referee let him play. That was a lot of contact on the play. No yep. harm, no foul. St. Mary's slowing things up after trying to move quick. Rapp dumps it off. Whedon back door, lays it in. That's a great job by Whedon, second side layup. Kept moving without the basketball. Nice pass by Rapp. She was able to finish. St. Mary's 15 makes, 14 assists. Rapp's first assist on the game. Ariel Johnson puts her head down, gets to the cup, and then gets it back off the miss. And a whistle is blown from the baseline. Johnson does a great job of not quitting on shots. Grabs her own rebound. Foul on the floor. Second chance opportunity. Baseline out of bound plays. If you can get at least four to six points of these per night, it bodes well for your team. What well, a good start. Gordon draws a foul on Hannafin off the inbounds. As I say, that 
the baseline out of bound plays, Evan, I liken them to the field goals in football. You can knock those down, it adds points. You can get four to six points a game, it bodes well in close games such as this. Well, things begin to pile up, that's a great point, Doc. And now St. Mary's has three team fouls already here in this third period. Hannafin picks up just her first as Gordon knocks down the first free throw. And so it looks like Amaya Oliver also checks back in. So I'm sorry, if I'm Coach Erica Hughes, I'm telling my team to continue to put the pressure on St. Mary's getting to the front of the rim. On the other side, Allison Fasnack may have to go to a zone defense, kind of slow down these fouls. Especially when LMU has capitalized on all of their opportunities. Nine for nine from the free throw line. It's a team that shoots about 73% on the season, Mastora, wing three, had it tipped there by Gordon. It's gonna be out of play, and off the tip, it'll be St. Mary's basketball. So it goes to my theory of layups, putbacks, and free throws. If you can win two thirds of those, you have a 66% chance of winning games. As you mentioned, Loyola is solid from the free throw line, as well as making shots to the rim. Their second chance opportunity, nice job by Bamberger. Use her body, go to the second side for the layup. And Bamberger curling around the post defender, now into double digits. She's got 10 points and eight rebounds, along with six assists. Triple double alert for Allie Bamberger. And she did a great job of not hooking the defender as well, because that could have been an offensive foul. I don't know how Johnson got that pass out. Gordon got the shot off, missed. And then an over the back foul is going to go against Alexis, or pardon me, Kari Clark. And that's an easy call. Bamberger did a great job of boxing out. Clark went right over her back for the foul. So first team foul against LMU, it'll be the second on Clark. Tied at 38 as we approach the midway mark here with this third period. And a fin from the top of the key. Finds a cutting Whedon in the paint. Floats it up and in, gets the roll. So St. Mary's is taking advantage of Loyola overplaying on the perimeters. He's using backdoor, getting layups. In regards, that's why they have so many assists on the evening. Gales have hit four of their last five from the floor as Clark drains that short corner too. I'm sure that's something in the scouting report that she doesn't do frequently. She was able to knock that down, line that up. Look routine. 40 all, Bamberger the dish, Mastora whips it out. Rath gives it up to Mastora, steps back, a three-pointer, and she's fouled. That's gonna be three free throws as Ariel Johnson came too close to the shooter. So nice ball movement, and Mastora started it all when she was able to get to the middle lane and kick it out, then she replaced to the corner for the three ball. As you mentioned, the, the challenge was too long with not allowing Mastora to land for the three, three points. In terms of the three point, now she had three free throws. Well, let's see if Mastora can capitalize on those three free throws on the other side of this break. Media timeout, 449 on the floor, tied at 40. St. Mary's and LMU here in the third period. We'll return to action after this break. You're watching St. Mary's basketball on the WCC Network.
ourselves a tie ball game with 450 left here in the third period out of the media timeout St. Mary's and McKenna Mastor will step to the free throw line for three free throws fouled on a three-point shot prior to the media timeout Evan Giddings and Dr. Joaquin Wallace with you here on the WCC network and now, Doc, we're discussing despite St. Mary's and LMU pretty much in gridlock at this point. This has been a game that has had some flow to it. Teams have found their rhythm after a slow start, and it's turned into quite a nice ball game. Yeah, you have to tip your hat to the officials because they're allowing the game to move freely. That's what you want as a coach, as a player. You just want the game to move freely. Obviously, fouls need to be called, but it has to be pretty much a deafening foul, like a real hard foul to be called versus ticky-tack fouls. They're doing a good job of allowing the flow of the action to just kind of go through. And a good job by McKenna Mastura to capitalize on all three free throws. So St. Mary's back in front for the first time since early in that second period. They have the lead and not for long perhaps as Ariel Johnson twists and turns and finishes. Plus a foul, a chance to tie the ball game. Yeah, Ariel Johnson did a great job of getting inside two feet in the paint. Was able to grab it, put her in a spin cycle. She had a matchup she liked over Steele, shot right over the top of her, was able to get an opportunity for the old-fashioned three. And so Hannah Rapp picks up her third personal foul with 440 left in the third. She will go to the bench. And Johnson connects on the free throw. LMU perfect as a team, and we're tied at 43. Johnson is five for five, so she is a a walking bucket right now for Loyola. Hannafin to a driving Dalton. Her shot is too strong. Long rebound grab by LMU. And Destiny Samuel out ahead to Ariel Johnson. Johnson tries to go around the back. Nearly lost the handle and gives it up. Johnson showing her wizardry with the basketball. Having it on a string. With eight to shoot now. Johnson being defended by Claire Steele. Just back into the game for St. Mary's. Gordon, who's got 13 points, has to pull the trigger. Cannot. That's a shot clock violation. I'm sure Coach Erica Hughes would have liked to have Johnson at that point. She had it at eight seconds. She had a one-on-one -on -one opportunity. She deferred. Have her to go downhill because she can take her man off the dribble. Now, this is something to pay attention to. And Claire Steele's offensive production, third leading score for St. Mary's has been held scoreless tonight, and as a bench, St. Mary's just three points. Dalton's triple is no good. Mastor an offensive rebound, but had it ripped away. Yeah, Mastor brought the basketball down. Easy pickings for Loyola. That was by Ava Toon, who's in for the first time today. Immediately fires up a shot with the left hand. No. Rebound to Oliver. Toon a jumper. Too strong off the board. Another offensive rebound. So we talk about second chance opportunities that wears out a defense. Oliver spins on Bamberger, draws the contact, and makes the basket. So on the third time, the charm, she was able to grab the basketball. She had a one-on-one -on -one action. We're talking about Amaya Oliver had one-on-one -on -one against Bamberger, felt she could win the matchup, went inside, put her in a spin cycle, goes up for the shot, foul. Now she has an opportunity for the old-fashioned three, but Evan, we talked about second chance opportunities. Third time was a charm. That was the third offensive rebound. That time they was able to convert. And Oliver converts the three-point opportunity. LMU 46, St. Mary's 43. By the way, that's Bamberger's third team foul. St. Mary's as a team is in the bonus the rest of the period. Now with St. Mary's, where are they going to get their scoring with Bamberger off the floor? That was off the hands and the store took her hands off of it. So now we're with St. Mary's look for their scoring. Some visible frustration there from Mastora. Have to put that behind them. A 6-0 run for LMU. And this has been a Lions team that again is depleted, missing four active members of their roster. As Gordon had it poked away by Hannafin. Nice help side defense. Hannafin read that. Was able to come from the backside. Was able to get right there and steal the basketball as the post player was not looking for. We're talking about Cassandra Gordon. They ran a little play for out of the Horn series, cleared out one side. Was not able to see the man coming from behind. Great job. St. Mary's off the side out. Dalton, Garrison, Hannafin, Mastora, and Wheat in the five on the floor for St. Mary's. St. Mary's now running a five out motion set. Dalton goes all the way to the rim, high up the window. 
So Dalton was able to get a clear lane to the front of the rim out of the motion series to open up the just part at the Red Sea. <laughs> no yeah. one was there. She was able to you drive a truck through there. She was able to hit it high off the glass. Dalton's got a game high 13 points to lead St. Mary's on 5 of 10 shooting. St. Mary's going to a small lineup right now. You see a lot of man movement and ball movement. Oliver, the triple. High arcing shot, no. Ball tipped up. Weeding comes out of the pack with it. Three on two for St. Mary's. Whips it inside. Garrison, the pump fake. And draws contact. That was a great job by Weeden to keep her chin up. Harrison ran to the front of the rim. Nice entry pass. I would like to see Harrison catch and go quickly, but she brought the ball down, was able to get fouled, but that was an easy basket for her. If she could have converted, just catch it, turn, and go. Three different Lions return. Clark, along with Adams, and Rodriguez. So I this game is going to be a battle of attrition. No doubt. One-point ball game. 12 lead changes, 10 ties already tonight. Hannafin kicks it out. Whedon, 4-3, and it's off. Garrison nearly gets the rebound. Instead, it rolls into the baseline. Johnson falling out of play, keeps it in. Nice job by Loyola, winning the 50-50 balls. Every possession matters at this point in the game. One-point lead by the visitors. Very even all across the stat sheet. St. Mary's 42, LMU 40% from the floor. There's Rodriguez, the pull-up. In and out, offensive rebound, Oliver goes up and gets fouled by Garrison. So Oliver was able to get inside position on Garrison as she was caught looking at the basket. She was able to get inside of her. Once the rebound happened, she went over the top for the foul. I would like to see her, as soon as the shot went up, establish position, but she was caught looking at the basketball. Oliver was able to sneak right inside, get the layup. I right, actually get the opportunity for the two free throws on the foul. Well, it was a shooting foul. Wouldn't have mattered because St. Mary's is in the bonus, but Garrison picks up her third personal foul. So that's something to keep an eye on. Hannah Rapp, Ali Bamberger, and now Aspen Garrison all have three personals as Amy West checks in. Oliver. Keeps LMU perfect at the free throw line. So one thing we know that Coach Erica Hughes worked on in practice, free throws. And that was the opportunity there with backcourt as Dalton came over the timeline, threw it back to Hannafin, but she was not clear over the front court. So turnover there, that was one of those turnovers that you don't like to see. Nonetheless, And perhaps Faznak hoping that Kirisome, redshirt senior, can add some stability to this team. And right now has made a couple of unsavory turnovers here in this second half. Kirisome picked up her dribble 50 feet from the basket. She has to maintain her dribble. Weed in a deep three. Off back iron, long rebound, corralled by Clark. I would imagine here Johnson will try to get downhill around 10 seconds left. You have about four second difference on the shot clock, game clock. And Johnson, who has played just about every minute tonight, has 14 points in 27 minutes. With six to shoot, looks to go to work on Kirisome. Goes to the lane, stops, and gets the kind bounce. LMU now up by five. Mastora into the front court. Kirisome will hoist from deep. And it's an air ball. So LMU extends their lead just a bit. Outscores St. Mary's by one in the third and carries a five-point lead into the fourth. When we return, St. Mary's has some work to do over the final ten. At Seven Giddings, it's Dr. Joaquin Wallace. You're watching St. Mary's women's basketball on the WCC Network.
crunch time for St. Mary's fourth quarter action with the Gales trailing LMU by five. Evan Giddings, Dr. Joaquin Wallace with you here on the WCC Network. St. Mary's trying to snap a three-game skid. They've gone to overtime in one of them, but Doc, you hope that you don't need overtime if you want to get a win against LMU. Yeah, they're facing a pretty feisty bunch in terms of LMU. They're playing defense. They're out in traffic as well. But one thing that they're doing, they're making all their free throws. They've been outstanding from there 100%. We talk about the three areas, Lael, Quebec, and free throws, so they're clearly winning the free throw battle. 13 attempts, 13 makes. As Ali Bamberger is back into the game with three fouls, kicks it out to McKenna Mastora, whose three is off. Rap off the rebound to Kirisome, who cleans up. Kirisome did a great job of not just standing and looking on the rebound. She cut to the front of the rim. Nice bounce pass for the layup. And so right now, a couple of Gales out there with three fouls. Mentioned Bamberger, also Rap playing with a trio of personals. Ariel Johnson in the lane. Misses that off the mark. You know, Ariel Johnson was second team all conference in the WCC last year to transfer from the University of Florida, so she definitely shows her ability to score. Under second year head coach Erica Hughes for LMU. Wrap now to the top. Kirisome straight away a triple off the mark. That would have been for the tie. Johnson. Wasting no time. Goes into the lane. Might have pushed off a little bit, but uses her strength to get the bucket. Anytime she has an opportunity to get downhill, she takes full advantage of it. Twelfth game with double-digit points for Johnson. She's got a team-high 18. Mastora, McKenna, McKenna Mastora, part of me, misses. Gets her own rebound and puts it up and in. Mastora did a great job of hanging with the basketball. It was tipped right back to her. Flipped it over using her left hand to kiss it off the glass. Both teams getting into the paint when they need to. 28 points in the paint for St. Mary's, 24 for LMU. St. Mary's has to try to find an answer to stop Johnson because she's pretty much done all she wants to do offensively. And Cassandra Gordon has been a nice secondary scoring option, misses there at the front of the rim. But she also has 13 points. Weeden for Rapp now, off the hesitation, all the way to the rim, blows the bunny. And that's one that she'd like to have back. The defensive player for Loyola was trailing the man with her back to the basket. You always need to see man and ball, so that's one of the reasons why they give up 71 points a game. Defensively, they're fundamentally, they just don't have it. You can see why they struggle on the defensive end. Nice cut by Rodriguez. Extra pass to an open Clark who sticks it. Rodriguez had it, decided to share with her teammate. Nice short jumper. So LMU lead is back to five. Kirisomi off the feed from Rapp. Wraps a pass around to Mastora. Down low, Bamberger to the corner. Now Kirisome with a lefty layup. Just got to pass Clark. As you can see again, St. Mary's is able to get to the front of the rim at ease as Loyola is getting face cut throughout the evening. They need to do a better job of seeing man in basketball. They need to have their back to the baseline. They're not doing that. They're chasing the, the offensive player, and they're not in position. Rodriguez off of a screen, misses that jump shot. St. Mary's can continue to run their open post offense. They'll get layups. A little give and go try there from Whedon to Rapp. Too long with the pass, and Rodriguez comes up with the steal. If she would have even caught that basketball, she would not have been in position to do anything with it anyway because the pass was not good because the defender was there in front of her, so it may have been an offensive foul. Well, no offensive foul there. Kirishomi trying to draw the charge. And instead, it's Cassandra Gordon that draws the and one. And so that's a big potential call right there. LMU now leading by five with a chance to go up by a game high six. And Kurosome, who picked up her first personnel, and that's the first team foul of the fourth by St. Mary's, heads to the bench with Rapp. And Hannafin, along with Claire Steele, return. And Gordon. It's her free throw, third of which now LMU 14 of 14 at the free throw line. And if you look at the roster, you have transfer from University of Florida as Johnson. Mork, who's transferred Boise State, not playing tonight. Oliver, transfer from USC. Gord, transfer from Georgetown. So they have some big time players on their roster and they're delivering. Gordon came in averaging only 5.7 points a game. Now, Alan Bamberger, who transferred a couple of seasons ago from Washington herself, draws the foul there. 
and we'll get to the free throw line for just the first time tonight. It's not often a team doc can keep Allie Bamberger, who of course demands such a physical attention to her on the block, able to keep her off the free throw line until six minutes left in the fourth. Yeah, that time she just grabbed the basketball, said, I'm going to the front of the rim and get the foul. Typically she's passing out of those double teams, but this time she said, I'm going to take it, take account of it. I'm going to make something happen out of that. Maybe I can get a three point play, but they're doing a great job every time she catches the basketball. And once she puts it on the floor, they're double teaming. Bamberger hits both free throws. A couple of games ago, tied to St. Mary's Division I rebounding single game record with 24 in the overtime loss against San Diego. Also had 23 points in that game. They're going to need a big fourth quarter from her. They want to come from behind. Trailing by four now. LMU taking their time, moving the ball around, looking for a cutting Rodriguez. A pump fake stops and pops off the window. There was patient with their offense. We, we talked about the fact that they're maintaining the basketball, and one thing they're doing, they're controlling the tempo. Claire Steele trying to get things back on track. Draws a foul on LMU. That'll be the second team foul on the Lions. As Samuel will return in Clark's stead. The personal is on Johnson. That's her third. Bamberger now looking for Steele. Top of the key. Backdoor cut, Dalton. That's good. And that's a nice read out of the Princeton series. Steele turned down the screen, drove it to the ball side. Nice bounce pass. That's the dribble at. Went right to the back of the basket for the pass for the layup. Nice pass by Steele. 22 makes on 17 assists tonight for St. Mary's. Johnson, the elbow jumper, no good. And St. Mary's creates a one and done for LMU. Opportunity for St. Mary's here to get another bucket here. Hamburger didn't want the three, instead Steele orchestrating to Mastora. Hits the, pardon me, misses the jump shot. But Dalton grabs the offensive rebound. Whips it out, nearly stolen. And said Hannafin into the lane. Extra pass, steal, three-pointer off the mark. It's nice ball move. That would have been a nice hockey assist there for the three ball. Like to see that go down for Steel. Only played 12 minutes in this contest. Claire Steele, who is the team's third leading scorer, has been quiet tonight. Her first game back after missing every game since the last time they were at home against UC Davis. Important possession for St. Mary's on the defensive end to get a stop. Johnson nearly lost her balance and said somehow finds Rodriguez, but before her shot goes up, the shot clock goes off. And that's the one stop they needed there. Media timeout on the floor. They'll be down by four coming out of the timeout. 4-11 left. Four-point difference between LMU and St. Mary's. Lions are in front here inside UCU Pavilion. Evan Giddings and Dr. Joaquin Wallace with you. After these messages, you're watching St. Mary's Women's Basketball on the WCC Network.
Ali Bamberger's got a double-double. Taylor Dalton's got 15 points, but it's St. Mary's that trails LMU 59 to 55 with 4.11 left here in the fourth quarter. Evan Giddings and Dr. Joaquin Wallace with you here on the WCC Network. St. Mary's still with plenty of time left, Doc. They're gonna have to figure some things out potentially defensively more than offensively if they wanna stop LMU. Yeah, they have to find a way to stop Johnson, keep her out of the paint, can't have turnovers. That's one thing you don't want to see coming out of a, a timeout of a turnover, but nice job by Hannafin was able to retain the basketball. Yeah, Hannafin and St. Mary's have created some open looks. Unfortunately, have not been able to cash in on as many as they would like. And again, only a four-point game. So just a couple of baskets separating these two squads. Cassandra Gordon, who's got 16, gets into the lane, kicks it out to Clark, whose shot is short. Uh, that's a little bit out of Clark's range. She was able to hit one on the other side of the floor, about seven feet out, 15 feet, a little bit too far for her. Bamberger a dish, wrap a quick pass. The Gales passing has been crisp here in this quarter, but they have yet to score over the last two minutes. Dalton the crossover, stops, turns around, and scores. And that's a great job by Dalton was able to take the contact and spin it over a left shoulder, now down by two, the 258 remaining in the game, or in regulation. Taylor Dalton leading all Gales with 17 points on just 12 shots. Has been efficient and effective on offense tonight for St. Mary's. So now we'll see which team can convert down late in the game, and there's an opportunity there for the old-fashioned three-point play. And maybe an unorthodox look, but a creative score by Cassandra Gordon and draws the foul, much to the dismay of Tacey Whedon. Yeah, Gordon was not going to be denied. Flipped it up over a left, or a right shoulder for a left-handed running hook. Took the contact, was able to finish. Awkward, but effective. And LMU has not missed at the free throw line tonight. 15 of 15. And Gordon's got 19 herself to lead all scores this evening. And don't forget, St. Mary's is seven out of eight. I mean, so they're shooting 80% from the free throw line, but 100% yeah. to 80% and seven more free throws, that's impressive. Bamberger on the block, trying to go before the double team comes and draws the whistle. So free throws, have they've been just that tonight. It's just a matter of how many times teams have gotten to the stripe. And LMU right now, plus eight at the free throw line. A little less than the difference in this ball game, but Bamberger trying to cut into this five-point deficit here. Bamberger did a great job there off the crab dribble. She usually goes over her right shoulder for the left-handed layup jump hook, but she's seen the trap was coming on that side, so she just spent back to baseline side, and that will allow her to get to the free throw line. That's a great read by her. Bamberger perfect at the strike. Now 14 points to go along with 10 rebounds and six assists. She's playing with three fouls. Hannah Rapp also playing with three fouls. Meanwhile, on the LMU side, only Kari Clark in foul trouble with four. She's on the bench. Instead, it's Destiny Samuel that's out there along with Amaya Oliver. Johnson also with three personal fouls. Tries to enter the pass, and it's taken away by Bamberger. That's a great job by Bamberger winning that 50-50 ball. The ball was on the four. He's able to get on it, grab it, secure it. St. Mary's has the opportunity now for the three to tie it. Tacey Whedon for the tie! <laughs> so Whedon was able to walk into that three, that three ball, but you have to tip, you have to Bamberger that started it all, getting on the floor with the 50-50 ball. It started, she was able to deliver, the senior. And we are all knotted at 62, Ariel Johnson all the way to the rim, and what a finish from Johnson. LMU's leading scorer's got 20. So Johnson did a Houdini act, was able to finish that. Took a lot of contact, shoulder strength, threw it high off the glass. Whedon now for the lead, in and out. That one looked halfway home. And Hannafin got away with a travel. I'm sure there's gonna be a timeout on the floor by Coach Erica Hughes. And some minor frustration from the St. Mary's shooting star. Nonetheless, Gales trail by two. We'll keep it here through the timeout. 1.15 to play. 64 on the LMU side, 62 for St. Mary's. As LMU's the one in the second year head coach, Erica Hughes, that took the timeout there. 
Well, at this point, up by two, they know this is an important possession for LMU. So they're going to try to run something, I would imagine, again, with Johnson. They probably get her off the ball first and try to get it in her hands around 12 seconds, see if she can create something getting to the front of the rim because they'll be shooting free throws with their perfect 15 for 15 for the night. So they'll probably take advantage of that. If the shot is missed, look for St. Mary's to get in transition, try to get downhill as well. I like to see Bamberg get the ball in the post or the mid post area where she can work around there. I love the mid post because they can't they can't double team her there. So if they get it to the mid post, she can turn, survey, see who's open, drive to the rim, pass. She's done a great job of making assists as well. We talk about her ability to pass the ball, six assists. So get her in a situation where she can make a play, pass, get it to the rim. I like her having the ball. I would like to see her and steal in some kind of two-man game if they could. And you wonder if Tacey Whedon, who's now got three threes, despite missing her last triple, had an opening. That might be there down the stretch if you have to bring help for Bamberger or Claire Steele like you're talking about, Doc. It will be interesting to see if St. Mary's can summon enough of that three-point shooting if they have the opening to be able to take advantage of what LMU has given them, which is looks around the perimeter. If they give the ball to Whedon on the same side as Bamberger, they can't double-team. So that's another out that they can look at as well. Keep her on the same side. If you double teams, kick it back out or for a three-point play. If they don't, or kick it out to the opposite side, but if they keep Whedon on the same side as Bamberger, now you know that Bamberger can have one-on-one -on -one action. If they do send a double team, look to skip it to the opposite side for the drive or the layup. Offensively for St. Mary's, sure not a lot of time left. Just cannot turn over the basketball, something they have been relatively good at tonight. 13 TOs on both sides. St. Mary's has turned their points off turnover into 14 compared to LMU's seven. So they haven't been hurt too much by their own mistakes. And now defensively, you're looking for a stop and a chance in a one-score ball game to go and tie this thing up or take the lead. So if you call a timeout in this situation, like I said, Coach Erica Hughes, I'm sure they're going to try to get the ball to Johnson's hands around 12 seconds left to try to get her downhill so she can win her matchup. Well, St. Mary's has four timeouts left. LMU has two. Clark swings it, nearly taken away by Dalton. Eight to shoot now for Johnson, under a minute to play. Steps back, shuffles the feet maybe, but misses the jumper, wrapped the rebound. Bad execution for Loyola. Now St. Mary's has opportunity to either tie or go ahead. Hannafin looking for Bamberger. Unable to get it to her, and so St. Mary's will move it around. One score game, 64-62. St. Mary's trails by a bucket. So there she go at the high post area there for the pick and pop. And Rapp gets fouled. Now that'll be the fourth team foul on LMU. Had one to give. Next foul committed would put St. Mary's at the free throw line. That was a great foul by Gordon. But as you can see, Coach Allison Fadnack was yelling to reverse the ball back to the other side with Bamberger. And Whedon was in the corner. Gordon, her second team, her second personal foul. Again, 14 fouls for LMU. Seven second shot clock, game clock separation. Dalton is now gonna have some more time to talk this thing over as acting head coach Allison Fasnack calls a timeout. Again, she's got four dock, a good time to use it. Well, they ran it. This was a similar situation when they played California, when they lost, that California was winning. They lost, Bamberg had a chance to win the game at the free throw line. It was trailing by one. So what I, what I think is going to happen in this situation, you run a similar play, run some sort of ball screen action between Steele and Bamberger, and I would put Wheat in the right corner. So if they come off the ball screen, if they double, I can kick it over to Wheat in the corner. She's going to be open. If not, if they give it to Wheat, they can't double team, get it down to Bamberger. She can go to the rim and go to the free throw line where she's been perfect at this point. Look to tie the game. Hoping for a good look. And St. Mary's, still if they miss, a chance to foul and potentially make LMU earn the win here on the road. But wouldn't like it to come down to that. Well, Steele's not in the game, so that takes away the two-man game that I would like to see in there. So I would imagine they're going to run some sort of ball screen Starting five on the floor for St. Mary's. It's Dalton, eight to shoot. Had an opening, drives inside, and Dalton, pardon me, that's Johnson that commits the foul on Dalton. And so that's going to be free throws. And 
And Taylor Dalton is going to have some potentially clutch free throws upcoming here with a chance to tie the game with 13 seconds left. Basically, I did not understand exactly what Loyola was doing defensively. They had allowed Dalton just to dribble the ball inside. And it's been to the stripe three times tonight, and this is the front end. So again, Evan, layups, putbacks, and free throws. Sometimes late in the game, the free throw line is your sixth defender, the best defender on the floor, as you've seen two free throws missed. And misses both, and immediately Oliver, who grabbed the rebound, called a timeout. Heady play by LMU. And that's their second to last timeout. Not a better time for it with 11.6 left on the clock. No situations there. St. Mary's was eight, was, was eight out of seven at that point. Now they're nine out of 12 of those two missed free throws. They got the look they wanted, was not able to convert the free throws, but we talk about it all the time, Evan. I, I, I beat it as a dead horse. Layups, putbacks, and free throws. And late in games, that free throw line is the sixth defender because it doesn't move. It's yeah. just there, just stand still. And we see it at the professional level, all the way to the college level, down to the high school level. Games are won and lost with your ability to make free throws late in the game. There's an opportunity to go into overtime, possibly, but now we have to see exactly what Loyola does on their end. They're going to get fouled. They're going to have two free throws. Are they going to be able to convert, or are they going to keep the door open for St. Mary's? Well, and it's unfortunate because that's exactly what you would like to create a chance to tie the game. Dalton's a 70% free throw shooter. She's been your leading scorer tonight, having scored 17 points. Even though it is a sixth defender, you can't ask for much more than that opportunity at the stage that the game is at to try and tie things. Yeah, free throws are different and with 18 seconds left That's versus true. the first yeah. or second <laughs> quarter. But now, St. Mary's can get a steal here. They're still in the game. Well, let's see. Into the backcourt it goes. Johnson immediately fouled by Whedon. Only half a second taken off the clock. So nice job by Whedon there. Collects her second personal. And still, St. Mary's has some work to do to get LMU into the bonus. Their third team foul, so need to commit two more. And McKenna Mastora, quick as a hiccup. Good chance for her to flex some of her side-to-side -side skills and commit a foul. Dalton, the pass up ahead, nearly stolen, and then a foul before Johnson can get to the rim. I'll tell you, sometimes getting the ball in is the most difficult part in the game, especially in these type of situations here. You see it oftentimes with turnovers are done, five-second calls. You work on it in practice every day, but for some reason, for some odd reason, you can't execute late in games. Dalton's third personal foul. Kari Clark checks back in for Aspen Adams. An extra look for the Lions. Pass up to Nicole Rodriguez, nearly fouled by Rapp. An extra push there towards the end. Some extracurriculars as the game gets a little testy. And now a technical foul has been assessed to Nicole Rodriguez. So now that is something you cannot afford to do. Yeah, in that situation there, you got to walk away from that situation. Now that opens the door for St. Mary. So they'll get some free throws here. However, Loyola will get free throws as well. So we'll see how this turns out. But you have to keep your composure in that situation. It is walk away. She didn't do it. Dominique Hunter, the official, was right there. Had to call. The technical was obvious. The action on the floor. If yeah. she didn't call it, people would have been yelling at her because rightfully so. So she had to call. It made it easier for her to do so. Yeah, I don't think anything extra beyond the technical is necessary, but the referees will go and check this out. A situation where... Rapp is obviously trying to make a play on the ball. Nicole Rodriguez takes a lob of an inbound and gets tied up with Rapp. It's been a physical game. These two teams have put blood, sweat, and tears on the line tonight. And Rodriguez just got caught up in the heat of the moment, gave a little elbow to the chest of Hannah Rapp. And that's right in front of the official, Doc. It's something you can't do, even though maybe the emotions are running a little bit hot at that point. So a good call by the official in that situation. And now LMU and St. Mary's both have to make free throws. So Rodriguez will shoot her two free throws. And then St. Mary's will get a free throw, I think probably one or two free throws in the ball as well. So we see how this plays out. They continue their streak of being 16 for 16 now to 100%. So they've been able to convert on their opportunities from the charity strike. Well, so apologies. I, I thought it was a technical on Rodriguez. It looks like it was a double technical that was assessed. So both sides get a chance at two free throws, and Rodriguez hits both of hers. 
Aiden, with some help, gets the first. And makes the second. And apologies here. So we're taking the timeout. Now, the technical foul, according to the stats, has been assessed to Rodriguez. So it seems like the two free throws that were taken on this side were due that to the foul. That was That was Okay, so fouls. it was due to the foul. Now you have those two free throws there. Now Loyola should get the ball here in this situation. I don't believe they get two free throws in the ball on the technical, so I think it goes back to, I would believe it goes back to Loyola at this point, but we'll see. Yeah. So interesting turn events in the final 10 seconds of the ball game. Still a two-point game. St. Mary's trailing LMU 66 to 64. St. Mary's took the timeout, so they still have two more timeouts in hand. LMU has one more timeout. Acting head coach Allison Fasnack discussing things with her squad. Second year head coach Erica Hughes discussing strategy with her squad. So I do believe actually. It looks like St. Like Mary's, is going Mary's to, will get the ball. So that's the reward of the technical. Right. So Rodriguez just, takes the foul shot. She drains both of hers off of her technical. Exactly. Whedon takes the free throws, and St. Mary's gets the ball. So exactly. at 8.6, they have a chance to tie here. Or perhaps even take the lead. Whedon with five. Down low, Bamberger working on Clark. It's blocked by Kari Clark, and a foul's committed underneath by Bamberger. What a defensive effort from Kari Clark. Goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with Bamberger, gets the stop, and with 1.4 left, LMU has a chance to ice the game. They got the look that they wanted, the one-on-one -on -one action. They decided not to double-team. We're speaking of Loyola. And she came up big, 34, Clark. Vertical spacer down low. Did not commit the foul. All right, Clark, two free throws will essentially end the game. One at least keeps it with the possibility for overtime. And she misses the first. That's the first free throw LMU's missed tonight. So that opens the door to St. Mary's. St. Mary's has a timeout so they can advance the basketball as She well. misses it. And they're gonna go back in, I believe look at how much time should be on the clock here. Whedon, as soon as Hannafin grabbed the rebound off the second miss, called for timeout. Currently, there's 0.4 left on the clock. There was 1.4 before the free throw. I would say it'd probably be at 1.3, 1.2, but again, goes back to the free throw, right? The sixth defender on the floor. They were perfect throughout the evening. Like you mentioned, two free throws ices the game. One free throw keeps the door open. Now St. Mary's has an opportunity to catch and score or go inside. So we'll see exactly how they play it, but they will get a chance to shoot the ball to the rim, and if it goes in, they'll walk out of here with a win. Or they may have to go back to the free throw line as well, so we'll see how Loyola plays it, but I'm sure Bamberger will have, well, this ball will touch Bamberger's hands. Now in the NBA, a timeout underneath advances the basketball. I believe that should be the case here as well. Yes, in the women's game, the ball is advanced on the timeout. In the men's game, it's not. And I'm sure that's a rule that they're going to change next year. But here it is. They advance the ball to the front court. So St. Mary's should get an opportunity for either free throws or a clear pass shot to the rim. We'll see how they play it. St. Mary's a chance to tie or win. Whedon doesn't get it off in time. Misses short. The shot would not have counted. So you got the ball into the hands of your best shooter, but unfortunately, just a little bit too much time taken, and St. Mary's falls at home to LMU by two points. The final, 66 to 64, and they lose their fourth straight, their third conference L of the season. Meanwhile, Loyola Marymount breaks their two-game skid. They are now two and three in the WCC, and they, in fact, jump St. Mary's right now for seventh place in the conference. St. Mary's tried to run an elevator screen for Whedon. She came through, but 1.4 seconds, he was not able to catch it clean and shoot. Shot was short. It was after the shot. Queen, 
I know it's only two points, but between win and loss, between the, your, your side and the other. Yeah, um, to be honest, I thought we had some self-inflicted wounds tonight. Uh, just some key critical turnovers. Uh, a couple of times where we just made a few mistakes defensively and gave up uh, baskets or offensive rebounds. Uh, we had some and ones where we're fouling, where we shouldn't be fouling. So, um, I mean, credit to LMU, they, they executed, but I, I think for us it was a, it was a little self-inflicted, and um, that's something that we will we'll get better at. We'll get better at. Well, obviously this weekend you have a chance to do that against Pepperdine. Uh, they lost earlier tonight against Pacific, so you got, I'm sure, a hungry Pepperdine team coming into your building. What do you expect to see from the Waves, and how do you expect this team, your own team, uh, to bounce back from the loss tonight? I mean, I expect our team to bounce back. You know, we're, we're not feeling sorry for ourselves right now. We're getting better and trying to get better every game. Um, you know, Pepperdine's going to come in, like you said, hungry. Uh, they're going to be in the same boat we are, and um, it's going to come down to who, who feels sorry for themselves less, to be quite honest. It's ready to compete and, and ready to put this game behind them and focus on the next one. Well, good luck with that focus. Uh, good luck in your matchup this weekend. We we'll look forward to it. Appreciate it. Thanks so much. I think head coach Allison Fasnacht here with us on the postgame program. Evan Giddings and Dr. Joaquin Wallace after St. Mary's Falls to LMU in the waning moments, 66 to 64, a tough loss for St. Mary's. And, and unfortunately, Doc, this has been a bit of a running theme. Um, you know, I didn't want to run it by by acting head coach Fasnacht at this point because I'm sure the wound is is still there but you know you're looking at a close loss to Cal as you mentioned earlier this year at home you're looking at an overtime loss to San Diego a couple of games ago uh, I know they had the overtime win against Boise State on the road but you know so, some tight losses in these situations and now here at home uh, it, it seems like there's just a couple of plays that Fasnak was talking about that could have gone their way but it also seems like you know there perhaps needs to be a switch potentially turned on towards the end there you never know when it's a bit of a coin flip game, but against an LMU team that's down four players, that has only nine active, that has clearly been hungry this entire game, um, a game that's winning in the balance, St. Mary's needs to try and figure out, you know, whatever they need to do to try and come out on top in these, these tight games. Well, you know, I always say when you watch a basketball game, Evan, you can always go to the end of the game and say, this is why our team lost. But there are plays during the course of the game that need to be made a lot of missed layups you had open looks that was missed at the front of the rim that if you convert that it changed the complexity of the game you had free throws late in the game that definitely hurt but taking this take the free throws away let's look at the little things missed layups layups putbacks and free throws anytime you get layups you get in the painted area you have to knock those down they had a lot of looks that they missed on the back door cuts they make half of those they win this game now you have a team that is down players at nine. You have players that's playing outside of themselves. We knew what, we knew what Johnson can do, but Gordon was totally some, she was just to a different level. And so she played extremely well, but you can't take away the fact that they was able to convert. We're speaking of Loyola in terms of the free throws made. They missed those too late in the game, but up until that point, they were 100% perfect. On the other side, St. Mary's was as well. But those two free throws late in the game changed the game, and that allowed Loyola to win the game. Well, St. Mary's falls to 7-8, and eight, just a tick below 500. Now 1-3 in the WCC, so they'll fall to ninth, unfortunately. Uh, pardon me, 8th, as, as uh, LMU jumps a couple of spots in the standings. They are now 2-3 and three in the WCC in 7th place, and LMU now 5-11 and 11 overall this season. Uh, LMU's next game is this weekend at Pacific, who beat Pepperdine earlier tonight. Meanwhile, Pepperdine comes to UCU Pavilion on Saturday. Doc Joaquin Wallace will have the call for you on the WCC Network. Uh, and Doc, any any final, you know, sort of last thoughts about this game? Obviously, you have a lot of experience being where acting head coach Allison Fasnacht is, along with Erica Hughes on the other side. How would you try to motivate this team having only 48 hours to do so? Well, that's the great thing. They can come right back and play, so you don't have to sit on it a while. But what you hope for is that Claire Steele can play more minutes because yeah. they definitely miss her leadership on the floor, especially late in games, being able to negotiate, navigate the offense itself. So I'm sure she's going to play more minutes as the season progresses forward. But again, they have to clean up the little things. The little things lead to big things. And if they're able to do those, they're able to win these games. As you mentioned, I watched them against California as well. Similar situation. Bamberger had a chance to win the game, 
down by one, missed a couple of free throws. So they're in the games, they're just not able to close it out. So hope they can progress towards closing these games out. It's gonna be a nice game against Pepperdine to try to get back on the winning side. They've lost four in a row. Pepperdine has lost as well, so yeah. somebody's gonna win that game <laughs> on Saturday. Hopefully it's the Gales of St. Mary's. Yeah, hopefully the Gales can get back up off the canvas. Four losses in a row, one of them in overtime, and uh, they'll have another crack at Pepperdine at a WCC foe in Pepperdine on Saturday. It's a one o'clock tip right here on the WCC network. Uh, a couple of stats before we get you out of here. Taylor Dalton led St. Mary's with 17 points on 12 shots. Allie Bamberger, uh, nearly a triple-double, 14 points, 10 rebounds, six assists for Bamberger. Meanwhile, on the LMU side, it was Ariel Johnson that led all scores with 20 points, seven of 17 from the floor. Meanwhile, Cassandra Gordon, 19 points, seven of 15 from the floor. LMU makes 17 of their 19 free throws. St. Mary's makes 11 of their 14. In many ways, that was the difference down the stretch of this game. And so we hope that St. Mary's can correct some of those ills and woes before their next outing at 1 o'clock on Saturday against Pepperdine. A big thank you to our production staff, headed by Emily Smith. Big thank you to Tim Fitzgerald, our SID here at St. Mary's. Big thank you to my broadcast partner, Dr. Joaquin Wallace hanging out with us tonight. He'll have the call for you on Saturday, so make sure to tune into that. My name is Evan Giddings, saying so long. We're one last time from Moraga. St. Mary's falls to LMU, 66 the final to 44 for the Gales. We'll talk to you next time on Saturday. You've been watching St. Mary's Women's Basketball on the WCC Network.